Hello, this is Mr. Kashmir. This is Unit 3, Lecture B. This lecture is in preparation for the reading and annotating of Course Reader Part B of H. And this Course Reader's topic is McCarthyism and Arthur Miller's The Crucible. Our big idea, McCarthyism, is named for Senator Joseph McCarthy. And it refers to a practice during the 1950s, by which many Americans were wrongfully accused of being communists, a charge at the time that had extremely negative connotations and consequences. One of America's greatest playwrights, Arthur Miller, managed to write a play called The Crucible that indirectly attacked the practice through allegory. Let's break this down. McCarthyism, it's named for Senator Joseph McCarthy, a U.S. senator, uh, and his name, last name McCarthy, uh, became the name of this sort of movement, this sort of practice in the 1950s called McCarthyism. McCarthyism uh, was a bad thing. Uh, it was a time in America when many Americans were wrongfully accused of being communists, and this was a charge that had extremely negative consequences for Americans at the time. Just to ground you a little bit in history, the 1950s were a few years after World War II. The U.S and its allies win World War II, and one of our strongest allies in World War II was the Soviet Union. Now, the Soviet Union had a different form of government and economy than we did, and their form is called communism, whereas we uh, live in a democratic society, and our economy uh, functions under the laws of capitalism. Um, without getting too much into the weeds of what communism and capitalism are, Although you should know those things, and I suggest you look them up if you don't. But anyway, um, once the war was over, America and the Soviet Union were the only two superpowers left on Earth. And Americans were afraid that the Soviet Union would take over the world with communism. And so, uh, quickly, it turned out that our former ally became a bit of an enemy. And uh, this is what is known as the Cold War, which was the time during which America and the Soviet Union um, were enemies with one another. And although we never bombed each other or actually went to war, we got many, very close many times. Um, anybody in America who had communist sympathies, anybody in America who was super liberal, had socialist or communist ideas about the way that a perfect society might work, um, they were considered to be suspect, possibly traitors, possibly spies from the Soviet Union. And so to be called a communist at this time uh, was a really big deal. You could lose your job, you could lose your friends, you could lose your relationships, uh, you might even go to jail. And um, McCarthyism was this time during which Senator Joseph McCarthy led a committee in the United States Senate, Senate called HUAC, the House on American Activities Committee, and what he would do is he would call in these people who were supposedly communists or had been to communist meetings or who knew communists. He would question them and he would you know, embarrass them and he would make them publicly denounce the idea of communism and he would make them name names of other people uh, that they had seen at communist meetings or that they thought were communists. And so it became this time of fear and backstabbing in the United States. Now, at the same time, Arthur Miller, uh, who actually... Um, you know, was, was one of those who uh, had some trouble with this committee, you know, he wanted to do something about it. And, and as a playwright, you know, his instinct was he wanted to write a play about it, but he couldn't write a play about McCarthyism directly, right? You couldn't just openly um, criticize uh, Joseph McCarthy. And so he found a way to criticize McCarthy through allegory. And he wrote a play called The Crucible. By the way, if you don't know what the word crucible means, maybe a good idea to look up that word. He wrote a play called The Crucible, and it indirectly attacked McCarthyism using allegory. And allegory is basically a symbolic story where you're writing about one thing, but you're really writing about another. And what uh, Arthur Miller decided to do was he wrote a play about the witch hunts in Salem, Massachusetts, back in the late 1600s. There were these witch trials where people were put on trial and found guilty of witchcraft and sentenced to death. And it was this time of great fear and of people naming names and of people backstabbing and of innocent people losing their livelihoods and their lives. Arthur Miller saw a great parallel between the time of the Salem witch trials and this current time that he was living under of McCarthyism. 
And he decided that if he wrote a play about the Salem witch trials, showing how crazy everyone was back then, maybe that could be a sort of thinly veiled attack on McCarthy. And without directly attacking McCarthy, he could use allegory to do so. So he write, writes this play called The Crucible, which is now one of the greatest and most well-known American plays of all time. So what's in your course reader? Well, you have four readings in this course reader. Uh, the first reading that you have is an abstract uh, from The New Yorker. You'll notice it's only a page and a half long. Arthur Miller, in 1996, about 40 years after writing The Crucible, writes uh, a piece in The New Yorker called Why I Wrote the Crucible, and it's about exactly that. It's about why he wrote The Crucible. I've not given you the whole article. I've just given you the abstract, which is basically just a brief summary of the article. B2 is another article by Arthur Miller, this one from the year 2000, so about 50 years after uh, he wrote The Crucible. And this is called Are You Now or Were You Ever? Are You Now or Were You Ever? is from the question that Joseph McCarthy would ask people at his hearings. The first question might be, are you now or were you ever a communist? And in this article, Arthur Miller, it's a long article, he talks about his life during that time, his art during that time, um, the fear and the backstabbing that was going on around him, and his slow and sure decision to write The Crucible. He also talks about his feelings now, looking back on The Crucible 45 or 50 years later. B3 is a Wikipedia entry about The Crucible itself. On page one of B3, you'll just get a brief overview of the play, and on pages two, three, and four, you'll get a plot summary of the four acts of the play. B4 is an excerpt from the play. It's the last several play pages of the play. It's actually basically the last scene of the play, The Crucible. How do you read this stuff? Well, reading number one is the easiest. B1 is only a page and a half long. It's an abstract from Arthur Miller's um, piece on why he wrote The Crucible, and all I want you to do is figure out why did Arthur Miller write The Crucible. That's the big picture there. Now, you're reading and annotating, but that's the big idea you're looking for. B2. This one's tough. Uh, I want you to look in this one for a couple of things. Look for the parallels that Arthur Miller draws between the Salem witch trials and McCarthyism. Look for the ways in which he says that life in 1692 in Massachusetts and life in 1950 as an American artist are similar. These, of course, are the parallels that led him to write this allegorical play, so look out for those. Also, look out for his big points about life under McCarthyism itself, what it did to people, what it did to him, what it did to his friends, what it did to America. And then finally, last thing I want you to look for is, you know, Miller writes this piece with the uh, benefit of an incredible amount of hindsight, uh, many, many decades after writing the original play. So I want you to look out for any interesting reflections that Miller has, um, you know, any criticisms or things he'd wish he'd, done, wish he'd done differently, looking back on The Crucible now 45 years later. In B3, I want you to get a basic sense of the plot of The Crucible. I want you to know the major characters and what happens in the play. And in B4, I want you to work to really understand that final scene. So you have to know, you know who these people are. You have to know what's happening. It's the end of the play. You can use your Wikipedia entry to help you. And you know, lastly, I also want you to know kind of like what do you think Miller is saying in this final scene? Uh, what is his point? And if you can maybe tie this back to what you think Miller is trying to say about McCarthyism, even though he doesn't say it directly, uh, then that would be great. So as far as optional pages go, there aren't any optional pages in this course reader. There are only four readings, and you've got the weekend to do it, uh, so you should be fine. As far as miscellaneous notes, I do want to give you one tip, and uh, the tip is uh, this is a great course reader uh, to use YouTube to help you with. Um, if you type in McCarthyism to YouTube, you'll find a lot. You type in The Crucible to YouTube, you'll find a lot. If you type in The Crucible and McCarthyism, you'll find a lot. Uh, everything from documentaries to scenes from the play to videos about the links between the two. YouTube can be a great resource for you. Uh, last note is, I would say don't come to class without understanding the following. Okay, One, 
understand McCarthyism. Two, understand the Salem witch trials. And three, understand the crucible. And finally, understand the relationships between these things. Come in with an understanding of McCarthyism, the Salem witch trials, to play the crucible and the relationships between those three. You should be good to go. Break a leg, guys.